Food is allied to culture in the most organic, interactive way. And one may be brought to the aid of, in enhancement of, or celebration of the other. Cutting hunger in half by 2050, achieve food security by 2020, we need to get ready. The focus of this conference is therefore on people, on poor people, and not on a particular sector of the economy. We at the International Food Policy Research Institute believe that the next three days offer a new and exciting approach to food and nutrition security in Africa because the conference is research and knowledge based. The voices of the diverse audience participants and stakeholders count. The conference advisory committee pays tribute to His Excellency President Museveni in his capacity as the chairman of the International Advisory Council of IFPRE 2020 Vision Initiative for the support his government has given to co-host this historic Pan-Africa conference. Unless an extraordinary effort is made by all of us, 40 million children on this continent will be malnourished by 2020. That is why a new vision is so urgent. The center of gravity of poverty, food, and nutrition insecurity on this continent is in the rural areas, where the majority of our people are dependent on agriculture for their livelihoods. The bad news is that the situation is bad and it is going to get worse. The good news is that we do have time to plan for what is happening. We do have time to respond to this epidemic. It looks like Africa is perpetually hit by hunger, poverty, disease. And it doesn't matter whether you talk about malaria or diarrhea diseases or indeed now HIV AIDS. The key point is, uh, is poverty. I just want to emphasize that nutrition security goes beyond food security and calories. During the next three days, I want that to be kept in mind, so that when we talk about food production, which is extremely important, we'll also have in mind nutrition security, adequate food, adequate health services, adequate caring practices, and a sanitary environment. When you get education, you get out of agriculture. That was the, the emphasis of education in the colonial period, that agriculture was for the uneducated. Uh, education meant liberation from agriculture. C'est que dans certains pays, n'est-ce pas, les femmes jouent un rôle très important. Donc, si nous voulons moderniser l'agriculture, il faut définir le rôle de la femme et faire en sorte que les femmes puissent accéder à la propriété foncière. Let us make farming attractive to our youth in such a way that when they turn around and compare farming with white collar jobs, they see more benefits and a better life in farming. Develop linkages between business, government, farmers, develop that entrepreneurship abilities so that the markets can supply the goods and the quality of produce. You cannot talk about food security and this nutrition you are talking about without talking about market access. But we need to examine the value chain from farming, that is production, from processing, marketing, and consumption, from plow to fork.
With human kindness and education, we'll declare an embargo on starvation. I promise to get rid of famine so we can all be carefree and jamming. By 2020, instead of an Africa that's malnourished, we'll see an Africa that will have flourished. President Abdullahi Wade of Senegal briefed participants on the genesis of the new Partnership for African Development, NEPAD, saying it is a new vision of Africa to create a platform for the private sector where there is need for private capital to play a key role in development. We must reduce waste, take economic and political reform seriously, provide the required leadership for our people, encourage the youth to return to the land to develop new and modern farmers, as well as improve the living conditions in the rural areas. The science and technology is here for those four basic food crops to produce what's needed. How to distribute it equitably is another matter, but first we have to produce. I have never been interested in equitable distribution of poverty. I want to produce something worth distributing equitably, and that's food. So this is the challenge. Where are the leaders? And let's go. Time is running out for me, and I want to see it happen. It's extremely important in the planning of the next decade, second and third decades to come, to understand that the impact of conflict still is with the country even when the arms have silenced. Women are the producers of food. Women are the people who prepare food for their families. Women are responsible for the distribution of food at the family level. Yet, women in many African countries do not have access and control to land. But even if it comes to solving a problem that can only be solved through GMOs, we do not see why Africa should not engulf this very important technology that will enable us to increase agricultural productivity. I appeal to you to let this be the century that ushers in the empowerment of the peoples of Africa so that they can determine their own destiny and stop being the victims. Africa is the richest continent on the planet Earth. The populations of Africa empowered with knowledge are the ones who will find the key to unlock this wealth. Please tell the world's political leadership you can do it. It's not such a deep mystery. We don't have to wring our hands at the suffering. We can make practical, step-by-step -step investments to overcome these challenges. There's no deep mystery. But we need the tools and the resources to do it. Many of you think that we can achieve food security, but are much more skeptical that we will achieve it. When you voted on the first day, 61% were convinced that food security in Africa can be attained by 2020. But when you voted again on the third day, astonishingly only 42% of you felt that food security will be achieved in Africa by 2020. It would be highly interesting to examine the reasons for your skepticism. Is it lack of political will or something else? Thank you for coming from all over Africa, from your offices and your farms and your businesses, your parliaments and universities. Let me assure you that all your contributions will feed into the way forward and into actions to assure a food and nutrition secure Africa. Uganda is considered a very fertile land. If you throw some seeds in this country, they grow. You have thrown a lot of seed. And, uh, I'm sure it will grow, not only in Uganda, but also beyond, elsewhere in Africa and outside of Africa. But a lot of 
seed multiplication and cultivation still has to happen after this conference. Excellencies, the priority actions should focus on five areas. One, agriculture productivity. Two, fostering pro-poor economic growth through improved markets, better infrastructure and greater trade competitiveness. Three, building institutional and human capacity. Four, improving health with due attention to HIV AIDS. And five, strengthening governance. We have a choice, however, either to create our own cultural incentives that motivate productivity and lead to self-reliance, or await the handouts from the charity of the world. We must remember, however, that there is a condiment that must be swallowed with the food of charity, a chastening ingredient that is known as pride. The choice is therefore no choice at all. We owe it to the future that those same fly-infested mouths of want that presently occupy the gallery of a failed past are filled with the self-empowerment and will launch a new chant from the Sahel to the Cape will make our world. <laughs> <laughs>